So the inside of this cavity is pretty much done, but there is one other toolpath I want to show you just because it's something else that you can do if you choose to. Remember I said when we did the water line cut, it wants to cut surfaces that are between 30 degrees from horizontal to 90 degrees from horizontal. And this slopes off quite a bit here, so there's going to be some very small serrations of toolpath on here. So we're going to add another toolpath to just clean off the top of these spokes. So what I'm going to do is grab this last toolpath, slide my mouse down, and drop it and say copy after, move my pointer to the end again, and we're going to go into the parameters for this one. And for our toolpath type, this time I want to do a radial type toolpath. Now a radial is a spoke wheel type cut. And since we happen to be cutting spokes, it seems to make sense that a radial cut would probably work good on those spokes. So that's the kind of toolpath we're going to do. It radiates out from a stenner, stepping over at an angular distance. And for our tool, we're going to switch back to that half inch ball end mill. For my comment, I'm going to say finish the top of the spokes. And for our cut parameters, I'm going to tell it I want the step over between cuts to be about 16 thousandths. And it says here that'll give me a scallop on there of a little bit over one tenth. Now, it's going to be rotating this radial cut around X and Y zero. And that's fine because that's the center of the hub. That's the center of the part. That works. We can tell it what radius to start at and what radius to end at. Now, in here, if I know the value, I can just key the value in. But if I don't, I can take the information directly from the model. I'm going to right click and tell it I want to take an X coordinate of a point. And I should be able to grab something right off the model right here. So it's taken the X position directly from that point and I can use that as is or I could make that a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. That's my choice. So maybe I want to make that just 1.4. And now for the outer radius, I can do the same thing. I can right click in here and tell it to make it equal to the X coordinate of a point. And I'm picking X coordinate because this spoke happens to point out in the X direction. So we'll grab this point here and maybe for that I want to go a little bit farther so I'll make that 4.5. Starting angle. Now I'm going to tell I just want to do that one spoke so I'm going to say for that spoke I want to start at minus 8 degrees and I want to go to plus 8 degrees. How do I know that? Well I don't. I'm just guessing. An 8 degree plus or minus range based on the size of that spoke should get the whole top of the spoke. I can always change it later if I don't like it or don't feel that it's getting enough. The next thing I want to look at are my transitions. I want to make sure that it's doing a smooth transition. So every time it goes up to the end of that spoke, it loops back around and comes back the other way. Because for my cut parameter, I want to make sure that it's cutting in a zigzag motion. So it's going to cut in both directions. It cuts up, loops around, and then cuts back. For my steep and shallow parameters, I'm going to turn that off. And we're going to say OK to this, and then we'll regenerate that toolpath. So with that finished, I'm going to come over here and turn on that toolpath. And we can see it's just doing the top of that spoke. Now at this point, I could copy that toolpath and then change the angles to do each of these other spokes. But then it would have to calculate for each one of those. What's easier than that is since I know there are four more spokes equally spaced, I can do a toolpath transformation. I'm going to tell it that I want to rotate a toolpath and that this radial is the toolpath that I want to rotate. I'm actually rotating coordinates. I want to rotate around the origin. My rotational view is going to be around my top plane. 
I need four more spokes and the starting angle to the next spoke is going to be the angle between spokes. Well, the angle is going to be 360 degrees divided by five spokes. So it's 72 degrees between each spoke. And the rotation angle for the next, or the rest of them, is another 72 degrees. And we'll OK this. Now, why do I do that as a transformation? Well, you saw how fast it just added those toolpaths. There was really no calculating time. It really just took the existing toolpath and rotated it around the coordinates that I gave it. So that's a real fast way of doing duplicates when you have something equally spaced either on a grid in X and Y or in this case radially around a center point. So let's do the final verification for the top. Now you can see the radial cut cleaning off the top of those spokes. So that should pretty much complete the top side of this cavity.